December 31st by S. E. Kaiser Read for LibriVox.org by Sarah Jump If January 1st is an ideal time for renewed consecration, December 31st is an ideal time for thankful reminiscence. The year has not brought us everything we might have hoped, but neither has it involved us in everything we might have feared. Many are the perils, the failures, the miseries we have escaped, and life to us is still gracious and wholesome and filled to the brim with satisfaction. Best day of all the year, since I may see thee pass and know, that if thou dost not leave me high, thou hast not found me low. And since as I behold thee die, thou leavest me the right to say, that I to-morrow still may vie with them that keep the upward way. Best day of all the year to me, since I may stand and gaze across the grayish past and see so many crooked ways that might have led to misery, or might have ended at disgrace. Best day, since thou dost leave me free to look the future in the face. Best day of all days of the year, that was so kind, so good, since thou dost leave me still the dear old faith in brotherhood. Best day, since I, still striving here, may view the past with small regret, and undisturbed by doubts or fear, seeks paths that are untrod as yet. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Ring Out Wild Bells by Alfred Tennyson Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Ring Out Wild Bells This great New Year's piece belongs almost as well to every day in the year since it expresses a social ideal of justice and happiness. Ring out, wild bells, to the wild sky, the flying cloud, the frosty light. The year is dying in the night. Ring out, wild bells, and let him die. Ring out the old, ring in the new. Ring, happy bells, across the snow. The year is going, let him go. Ring out the false, ring in the true. Ring out the grief that saps the mind. For those that here we see no more, Ring out the feud of rich and poor. Ring in redress to all mankind. Ring out a slowly dying cause and ancient forms of party strife. Ring in the nobler modes of life with sweeter manners, purer laws. Ring out the want, the care, the sin, the faithless coldness of the times. Ring out, ring out my mournful rhymes but ring the fuller minstrel in. Ring out false pride in place and blood, the civic slander and the spite. Ring in the love of truth and right. Ring in the common love of good. Ring out old shapes of foul disease. Ring out the narrowing lust of gold. Ring out the thousand wars of old. Ring in the thousand years of peace. Ring in the valiant man and free the larger heart, the kindlier hand. Ring out the darkness of the land. Ring in the Christ that is to be. Alfred Tennyson End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Work by Henry Van Dyke Read for LibriVox.org by Melvin Lee. The dog that dropped his bone to snap at its reflection in the water went dinnerless. So do we often lose the substance, the joy of our work by longing for tasks we think better fitted to our capabilities. Let me but do my work from day to day, in field or forest, at the desk or loom, in roaring marketplace or tranquil room. Let me but find it in my heart to say, When vagrant wishes beckon me astray, This is my work, my blessing, not my doom. Of all who live, I am the one By whom this work can best be done, In the right way. Then shall I see it not too great nor small, To suit my spirit and to prove my powers. Then shall I cheerful greet the laboring hours, And cheerful turn, when long shadows fall, at eventide to play and love and rest, because I know for me my work is best. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Start Where You Stand by Burton Braley Read for LibriVox.org by S.K. Start Where You Stand When a man who had been in the penitentiary applied to Henry Ford for employment, he started to tell Mr. Ford his story. Never mind, said Mr. Ford. I don't care about the past. Start Where You Stand. Author's Note Start where you stand, and never mind the past. The past won't help you in beginning new. If you have left it all behind at last, why, that's enough. You're done with it. You're through. This is another chapter in the book. This is another race that you've planned. Don't give the vanished days a backward look. Start where you stand. The world won't care about your old defeats. If you can start anew and win success, the future is your time and time is fleet and there is much of work and strain and stress. Forget the buried woes and dead despairs. Here is a brand new trial right at hand. The future is for him who does and dares. Start where you stand. Old failures will not halt, old triumphs aid. Today is the thing, tomorrow soon will be. Get in the fight and face it unafraid, and leave the past to ancient history. What has been has been. Yesterday is dead, and by it you are neither blessed nor banned. Take courage, man. Be brave and drive ahead. Start where you stand. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Hopeful Brother by Frank L. Stanton Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama a Cripple Creek miner remarked that he had hunted for gold for twenty-five years. He was asked how much he had found. None, he replied, but the prospects are good. If you ask him, day or night, when the world warn't running right, anything that's good in sight? This is all as what he'd say, in his uncomplaining way. Well, I'm hoping... When the winter days was nigh and the clouds froze in the sky, never sought him down to sigh, but still singing on his way, he'd stop long enough to say, Well, I'm hoping. Dian asked of him that night, spare it waiting for its flight, Brother, air your prospects bright? And last words they heard him say in the old sweet cheerful way, well, I'm hoping. Frank L. Stanton End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Song of Thanksgiving by Angela Morgan Read for LibriVox.org by Elizabeth Parsons We should have grateful spirits, not merely for personal benefits, but also for the right to sympathize, to understand, to help, to trust, to struggle, to aspire. Thank God I can rejoice in human things, the multitude's glad voice, the street's warm surge beneath the city light, the rush of hurrying faces on my sight, the million-celled emotion in the press that would their human fellowship confess. Thank thee, because I may my brother feed, that thou hast opened me unto his need, kept me from being callous, cold, and blind, taught me the melody of being kind. Thus for my own and for my brother's sake, thank thee I am awake. Thank thee that I can trust, that though a thousand times I feel the thrust of faith betrayed, I still have faith in man, believe him pure and good since time began. Thy child forever, though he may forget, the perfect mould in which his soul was set. Thank thee that when love dies, fresh love springs up. New wonders pour from heaven's cup. Young to my soul the ancient need returns. Immortal in my heart the ardour burns. My altar fires replenished from above. Thank thee that I can love. Thank thee that I can hear, finely and keenly with the inner ear, Below the rush and clamor of a throng, The mighty music of the undersong, And when the day has journeyed to its rest, 
lo as i listen from the amber west where the great organ lifts its glowing spires there sounds the chanting of the unseen choirs thank thee for sight that shows the hidden flame beneath all breathing throbbing things the same thy pulse the pattern of the thing to be thank thee that i can see thank thee that i can feel that though life's blade be terrible as steel my soul is stripped and naked to the fang i crave the stab of beauty and the pang to be alive to think to yearn to strive to suffer torture when the goal is wrong to be sent back and fashioned strong rejoicing in the lesson that was taught by all the good the grim experience wrought at last exulting to arrive thank god i am alive end of poem this recording is in the public domain Loose the Day Loitering by Johann Wolfgang von Goethe Read for LibriVox.org by S.K. Loose the Day Loitering Anything is hard to begin, whether it be taking a cold bath, writing a letter, clearing up a misunderstanding, or falling to on the day's work. Yet, quote, a thing begun is half done, end quote. No matter how unpleasant a thing is to do, begin it, and immediately it becomes less unpleasant form the excellent habit of making a start lose the day loitering twill be the same story tomorrow and the next more dilatory for indecision brings its own delays and days are lost lamenting over lost days are you in earnest seize this very minute what you can do or think you can begin it only engage and then the mind grows heated begin it and the work will be completed End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Playing the Game by Burton Bailey Recorded for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson We don't like a man who whines that the cards were stacked against him or that the umpire cheated. We admire the chap who, when he must take his medicine, takes it cheerfully, bravely. To play the game steadily is a merit, whether the game be a straight one or crooked. A thoroughbred, even though bad, has more of our respect than the craven who cleaves to the proprieties solely from fear to violate them. It has well been said, the mistakes which make us men are better than the accuracies that keep us children. Yes, he went and stole our steers, so of course he had to die. I ain't shedding any tears, but when I cash in, say I, want to take it like that guy. Laughing, joking with the rest, not a whimper, not a cry, standing up to meet the test, till we swung him clear and high, with his face turned toward the west. Here's the way it looks to me. Cattle thief's no thing to be, but if you take up that trade, be the best one ever made. If you've got a thing to do, do it strong, and see it through. That was him. He played the game, took his chances, bet his hand. When at last the showdown came and he lost, he kept his sand. Didn't weep and didn't pray, didn't waver or repent. Simply tossed his cards away, known well just what it meant. Never claimed the deck was stacked, never called the game a snide. Acted like a man should act, took his medicine and died. So I say it here again, what I think is true of men. They should try to do what's right, fair and square and clean and white. But whatever is their line, bad or good or foul or fine, let them go to the limit, play like a plunger. That's the way. In the poem. This recording is in the public domain. Resolve, Charlotte Perkins Gilman, read for LibriVox.org. There are some things we should all resolve to do. What are they? Anyone may make a list for himself. It would be interesting to compare it with the one here given by the poet. 
to keep my health, to do my work, to live, to see to it I grow and gain and give, never to look behind me for an hour, to wait in weakness and to walk in power, but always fronting onward to the light, always and always facing towards the right, robbed, starved, defeated, fallen, wide astray, on with what strength I have, back to the way. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. When Nature Wants a Man by Angela Morgan Read for LibriVox.org by Melvin Lee Only melting and hammering can shape and temper steel for fine use. Only struggle and suffering can give a man the qualities that enable him to render large service to humanity. Lincoln was born in a log cabin. He split rails and conned a few books by the firelight in evening. He became a backwoods lawyer with apparently no advantages or encouraging prospects. But all the while he had his visions, which ever became nobler, and the adversities he knew, but gave him the deeper sympathy for others and the wider and steadier outlook on human problems. Thus, when the supreme need arose, Lincoln was ready. Harsh, visaged nature had done its work of molding and preparing a man. When nature wants to drill a man and thrill a man and skill a man, when nature wants to mold a man to play the noblest part, when she yearns with all her heart to create so great and bold a man that all the world shall praise, watch her method, watch her ways, how she ruthlessly perfects whom she royally elects, how she hammers him and hurts him, and with mighty blows converts him into trial shapes of clay which only nature understands. While his tortured heart is crying and he lifts beseeching hands, how she bends but never breaks when his good she undertakes, how she uses whom she chooses and with every purpose fuses him by every art induces him to try his splendor out. Nature knows what she's about. When nature wants to take a man and shake a man and wake a man, when nature wants to make a man to do the future's will, when she tries with all her skill and she yearns with all her soul to create him large and whole, with what cunning she prepares him, how she goads and never spares him, how she whets him and she frets him and in poverty begets him, how she often disappoints whom she sacredly anoints, with what wisdom she will hide him, never minding what betide him, though his genius sob with slighting, and his pride may not forget, bids him struggle harder yet, makes him lonely so that only God's high messages shall reach him, so that she may surely teach him what the hierarchy planned, though he may not understand, gives him passions to command. How remorselessly she spurs him, with terrific ardor stirs him, when she poignantly prefers him. When nature wants to name a man, and fame a man, and tame a man, when nature wants to shame a man, to do his heavenly best, when she tries the highest test, that her reckoning may bring, when she wants a god or king, how she reigns him and restrains him, so his body scarce contains him, when she fires him and inspires him, keeps him yearning, ever burning for a tantalizing goal, lures and lacerates his soul, sets a challenge for his spirit, draws it higher when he's near it, makes a jungle that he clear it, makes a desert that he fear it, and subdue it if he can. So doth nature make a man. Then, to test his spirit's wrath, hurls a mountain in his path, puts a bitter choice before him, and relentless stands o'er him. Climb or perish, so she says. Watch her purpose, watch her ways. Nature's plan is wondrous kind. Could we understand her mind? 
Fools are they who call her blind, when his feet are torn and bleeding, yet his spirit mounts unheeding, all his higher power speeding, blazing newer paths and fine, when the force that is divine leaps to challenge every failure, and his ardor still is sweet, and love and hope are burning in the presence of defeat. Lo, the crisis, lo, the shout that must call the leader out. When the people need salvation, doth he come to lead the nation? Then doth nature show her plan, when the world has found a man. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Order and the Bees by William Shakespeare Read for LibriVox.org by Melvin Lee We often wish that we might do some other man's work, occupy his social or political station, but such an interchange is not easy. The world is complex, and its adjustments have come from long years of experience. Each man does well to perform the tasks for which nature and training have fitted him, and instead of feeling envy toward other people, we should rejoice that all labor, however diverse, is to one great end. It makes life richer and fuller. Therefore doth heaven divide the state of man in diverse functions, setting endeavor in continual motion, to which is fixed, as an aim or but, obedience. For so work the honey bees creatures that by a rule in nature teach the act of order to a peopled kingdom they have a king and officers of sorts where some like magistrates correct at home others like merchants venture trade abroad others like soldiers armed in their stings make boot upon the summer's velvet buds which pillage they with merry march bring home to the tent royal of their emperor who busied in his majesty surveys the singing masons building roofs of gold the civil citizens kneading up the honey the poor mechanic porters crowding in their heavy burdens at his narrow gate the sad-eyed justice with his surly hum delivering o'er to executors pale the lazy yawning drone i this infer that many things having full reference to one consent may work contrariously. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Self-Dependence by Matthew Arnold Read for LibriVox.org by Melvin Lee One star does not ask another to adore it or amuse it. Mount Shasta though it towers for thousands of feet above its neighbors, does not repine that it is alone, or that the adjacent peaks see much more that it misses under the clouds. Nature does not trouble itself about what the rest of nature is doing, but man constantly worries about other men, what they think of him, do to him, fail to emulate in him, have or secure in comparison with him. He lacks nature's inward quietude. Calmness and peace come by being self-contained. Weary of myself and sick of asking what I am and what I ought to be, at this vessel's prow I stand, which bears me forwards, forwards o'er the starlit sea, and the look of passionate desire o'er the sea, and to the stars I send. Ye who from my childhood up, have calmed me. Calm me, ah, compose me to the end. Ah, once more I cried, Ye stars, ye waters, O oh, my heart, your mighty charm renew. Still, still, let me, as I gaze upon you, feel my soul becoming vast like you. From the intense, clear, star-sown vault of heaven, over the lit sea's unquiet way, in the rustling night air came the answer. Wouldst thou be as these are? Live as they. Unaffrighted by the silence round them, undistracted by the sights they see, these demand not 
that the things without them yield them love, amusement, sympathy, and with joy the stars perform their shining, and the sea its long moon-silvered roll. For self-possessed they live, nor pine with noting all the fever of some differing soul, bounded by themselves, and unregardful in what state God's other works may be, in their own tasks, all their powers pouring, these attain the mighty life you see. O oh, airborne voice, long since, severely clear, a cry like thine in mine own heart I hear. Resolve to be thyself, and know that he who finds himself loses his misery. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Little Prayer by S. E. Kaiser Read for LibriVox.org by S. K. A Little Prayer We should strive to bring what happiness we can to others. Most still, we should strive to bring them no unhappiness. When we come to die, it is, as George Eliot once said, not our kindness or our patience or our generosity that we shall regret, but our intolerance and our harshness. That I may not in blindness grope, but that I may with vision clear know when to speak a word of hope or add a little wholesome cheer. That tempered winds may softly blow where little children thinly clad sit dreaming when the flame is low of comforts they have never had. That through the year which lies ahead no heart shall ache, no cheek be wet for any word that I have said or profit I have tried to get. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Man's a Man for a That by Robert Burns Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson It is said that once at a laird's house Burns was placed at a second table and that this rankled in his breast and caused him to write his poem on equality. He insists that rank, wealth, and external distinctions are merely the stamp on the guinea. The man is the gold itself. Snobbishness he abhors. Poverty he confesses to without hanging his head in the least. The pith of sense and the pride of worth he declares superior to any dignity thrust upon a person from the outside. In a final prophetic mood, he looks forward to the time when a democracy of square dealing shall prevail, praise shall be reserved for merit, and men the world over shall be to each other as brothers. In line 8, Goud equals gold. 9, Hamley equals homely commonplace. 11. Gi equals give. 15. Say equals so. 17. Berkey equals fellow. 20. Quiff equals simpleton. 25. Mac equals make. 27. A boon equals above. 28. Mona must not for a claim. 36. Gree equals prize is there for honest poverty that hangs his head and all that the coward slave we pass him by we dare be poor for all that for all that and all that our toils obscure and all that the rank is but the guinea stamp the man's the gowd for all that what though on hamely fare we dine we're hodden grey and all that Gee fools their silks and knaves their wine. A man's a man for a that. For a that and a that, their tinsels show and a that. The honest man, though e'er se poor, is king o' men for a that. Ye see yon Berkey caught a lord, wha struts and stares and a that. Though hundreds worship at his word, he's but a 
quiff for a' that for a' that and a' that his ribbon star and a' that the man of independent mind he looks and laughs at a' that a prince can mak a belted knight a marquis duke and a' that but an honest man's a boon his might good faith he mourn up for that for a' that and a' that their dignities and a' that the pith o sense and pride o worth are higher rank than a' that then let us pray that come it may as come it will for a' that that sense and worth o'er all the earth may bear the gree and a' that for a' that and a' that it's coming yet for a' that that man to man the world o'er shall brothers be for a' that and a poem this recording is in the public domain recording by leonard wilson of springfield ohio life and death by anna barbold read for librivox dot org by leonard wilson life i know not what thou art but know that thou and i must part and when or how or where we met i own to me a secret yet life we've been long together through pleasant and through cloudy weather tis hard to part when friends are dear perhaps will cost a sigh a tear then steal away give little warning choose thine own time say not good night but in some brighter clime bid me good morning and a poem this recording is in the public domain recording by leonard wilson of springfield ohio life and death by ernest h crosby read for librivox dot org by leonard wilson many a man would die for wife and children for faith for country but would he live for them that often is the more heroic course and the more sensible a rich man was hiring a driver for his carriage he asked each applicant how close he could drive to a precipice without toppling over one foot six inches three inches ran the replies but an irishman declared faith and i'd keep as far away from the place as i could consider yourself employed was the rich man's comment so he died for his faith that is fine more than most of us do but stay can you add to that line that he lived for it too in death he bore witness at last as a martyr to truth did his life do the same in the past from the days of his youth it is easy to die men have died for a wish or a whim from bravado or passion or pride was it harder for him but to live every day to live out all the truth that he dreamt while his friends met his conduct with doubt and the world with contempt was it thus that he plodded ahead never turning aside then we'll talk of the life that he led never mind how he died and a poem this recording is in the public domain recording by leonard wilson of springfield ohio On Being Ready by Grantland Rice, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. On Being Ready At nightfall, after bloody Auntie Tam Lee's army, outnumbered and exhausted, lay with the Potomac at its back. So serious was the situation that all the subordinate officers advised retreat, but Lee, though too maimed to attack would not leave the field save of his own volition if mcclellan wants a battle he declared 
he can have it mcclellan hesitated and through the whole of the next day kept his great army idle the effect upon the morale of the two forces and the two governments can be imagined the man who is there with the wallop and punch the one who is trained to the minute may well be around when the trouble begins but you seldom will find he is in it for they let him alone when they know he is there for any set part in the ramble to pick out the one who is shrinking and soft and not quite attuned to the scramble the one who is fixed for whatever they start is rarely expected to prove it they pass him along for the next shot in sight where they take a full wind-up and groove it for who wants to pick on a bulldog or such where a quivering poodle is handy when he knows he can win with a kick or a brick with no further trouble to bandy grantland rice end of poem this recording is in the public domain two at a fireside by edwin markham read for librivox dot org by jason in panama i built a chimney for a comrade old i did the service not for hope or hire and then i travelled on in winter's cold yet all the day i glowed before the fire edwin markham end of poem this recording is in the public domain Today by Douglas Malloch, read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson. We often lose the happiness of today by brooding over the sorrows of yesterday, or fearing the troubles of tomorrow. This is exceedingly foolish. There is always some pleasure at hand. Seize it, and at no time will you be without pleasure. You cannot change the past but your spirit at this moment will in some measure shape your future live life therefore in the present tense do not miss the joys of to-day sure this world is full of trouble i ain't said it ain't lord i've had enough and double reason for complaint rain and storm have come to fret me skies were often gray Thorns and brambles have beset me on the road, but say, ain't it fine today? What's the use of always weepin', makin' trouble last? What's the use of always keepin' thinkin' of the past? Each must have his tribulation, water with his wine. Life, it ain't no celebration. Trouble, <laughs> I've had mine, but today is fine. It's today that I am livin', not a month ago, havin', losin', takin', givin', as time wills it so. Yesterday a cloud of sorrow fell across the way. It may rain again tomorrow, it may rain, but say, ain't it fine today? End the poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. The Arrow and the Song by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Read for LibriVox.org by Kathleen. We can calculate with fair accuracy the number of miles an automobile will go in an hour. We can gauge pretty closely the amount of merchandise a given sum of money will buy, but a good deed or a kind impulse is not measurable their influence works in devious ways and lives on when perhaps we can see them no more i shout an arrow into the air it fell to earth i knew not where for so swiftly it flew the sight could not follow it in its flight i breathed a song into the air it fell to earth i knew not where for who has sight so keen and strong that it can follow the flight of a song long long afterward in an oak i found the arrow still unbroke and the song from beginning to end i found again in the heart of a friend end of poem this recording is in the public domain
the inner light by john milton read for LibriVox.org by kathleen thrice is he armed that hath his quarrel just and he but naked though locked up in steel whose conscience with injustice is corrupted says shakespeare but not only does a clear conscience give power it also gives light with it we could sit at the centre of the earth and yet enjoy the sunshine without it we live in a rayless prison he that has light within his own clear breast may sit i the centre and enjoy bright day but he that hides a dark soul and foul thoughts benighted walks under the midday sun himself is his own dungeon end of poem this recording is in the public domain the things that haven't been done before by edgar a guest read for librivox dot org by s k the things that haven't been done before it is said that if you hold a stick in front of the foremost sheep in a flock that files down a trail in the mountains he will jump it and that every sheep thereafter will jump when he reaches the spot even if the stick be removed so are many people mere unthinking imitators blind to facts and opportunities about them Kentucky could not be lived in by the white race till Daniel Boone built his cabin there. The air was not part of the domain of humanity till the Wright brothers made themselves birdmen. The things that haven't been done before, those are the things to try. Columbus dreamed of an unknown shore at the rim of the far-flung sky, and his heart was bold and his faith was strong as he ventured in dangers new and he paid no heed to the jeering throng or the fears of the doubting crew the many will follow the beaten track with guideposts on the way they live and have lived for ages back with a chart for every day someone has told them it's safe to go on the road he has traveled over and all that they ever strive to know are the things that were known before a few strike out without map or chart where never a man has been from the beaten paths they draw apart to see what no man has seen there are deeds they hunger alone to do though battered and bruised and sore they blaze the path for the many who do nothing not done before the things that haven't been done before are the tasks worthwhile today are you one of the flock that follows or are you one that shall lead the way are you one of the timid souls that quail at the jeers of a doubting crew or dare you whether you win or fail strike out for a goal that's new end of poem this recording is in the public domain the has beens by walt mason read for librivox.org by jason in panama the has beens I read the papers every day, and often counter tales, which show there's hope for every jay who in life's battle fails. I've just been reading of a gent who joined the has-been ranks, at fifty years without a cent or credit at the banks. But undismayed he buckled down, refusing to be beat, and captured fortune and renown. He's now on easy street. Men say that fellows down and out ne'er leave the rocky track. But facts will show, beyond a doubt, that has-beens do come back. I know, for I who write this rhyme, when forty-odd years old, was down and out, without a dime, my whiskers full of mold. By black disaster I was trounced until it jarred my spine. I was a failure so pronounced I didn't need a sign. And after I had soaked my coat, I said, at forty-three, I'll see if I can catch the goat that has escaped from me. I labored hard, I strained my dome, to do my daily grind, until in triumph I came home, my billy goat behind. And any man who still has health may with the winners stack, and have a chance at fame and wealth, for has-beens do come back. Walt Mason End of Poem This recording is in the public domain. Wishing by Ella Wheeler Wilcox 
read for LibriVox .org by kathleen horace greeley said that no one need fear the editor who indulged in diatribes against the prevalence of polygamy in utah but that male factors had better look out when an editor took up his pen against abuses in his own city we all tend to begin our reforms too far away from home the man who wishes improvement strongly enough to set to work on himself is the man who will obtain results do you wish the world were better let me tell you what to do set a watch upon your actions keep them always straight and true rid your mind of selfish motives let your thoughts be clean and high you can make a little eden of the sphere you occupy do you wish the world were wiser well suppose you make a start by accumulating wisdom in the scrapbook of your heart do not waste one page on folly live to learn and learn to live if you want to give men knowledge you must get it ere you give do you wish the world were happy then remember day by day just to scatter seeds of kindness as you pass along the way for the pleasures of the many may be oft times traced to one as the hand that plants an acorn shelters armies from the sun End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Awareness by Miriam Teichner Read for LibriVox.org by S.K. Awareness A man must keep a keen sense of the drift and significance of what he is engaged in if he is to make much headway. Yet, Many human beings are so sunk in the routine of their work that they fail to realize what it is all for. A man who was tapping with a hammer the wheels of a railroad train remarked that he had been at the job for 27 years. What do you do when a wheel doesn't sound right? The passenger inquired. The man was taken aback. I never found one that sounded that way, said he. God, let me be aware. Let me not stumble blindly down the ways, just getting somehow safely through the days, not even groping for another hand, not even wondering why it all was planned. Eyes to the ground, unseeking for the light, soul never aching for a wild wing flight. Please keep me eager just to do my share. God, let me be aware. God, let me be aware, stab my soul fiercely with others' pain. Let me walk, seeing horror and stain. Let my hands, groping, find other hands. Give me the heart that divines, understands. Give me the courage, wounded, to fight. Flood me with knowledge, drench me in light. Please, keep me eager just to do my share. God, let me be aware. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. One of These Days by James W. Foley Read for LibriVox.org by S.K. One of These Days The worst fault in a hound is to run counter, to follow the trail backward, not forward. Is the fault less when men are guilty of it? Behind us is much that we have found to be faithless, cruel, or unpleasant. Why go back to that? Why not go forward to the things we really desire? Say, let's forget it. Let's put it aside. Life is so large and the world is so wide. Days are so short and there's so much to do. What if it was false? There's plenty that's true. Say, let's forget it. Let's brush it away. Now and forever. So what do you say? All of the bitter words said may be praise. One of these days. Say, let's forget it. Let's wipe off the slate. Find something better to cherish than hate. There's so much good in the world that we have had. Let's strike a balance and cross off the bad. Say, let's forgive it, whatever it be. Let's not be slaves when we ought to be free. We shall be walking in sunshiny ways one of these days. Say, let's not mind it. Let's smile it away. Bring not a withered rose from yesterday. Flowers are so fresh from the wayside and wood. Sorrows are blessings, but half understood. Say, let's not mind it, however it seems. 
hope is so sweet and holds so many dreams all of the sere fields with blossoms shall blaze one of these days say let's not take it so solely to heart hates may be friendships just drifted apart failure be genius not quite understood say let's get closer to somebody's side see what his dreams are and learn how he tried see if our scoldings won't give way to praise one of these days say let's not wither let's branch out and rise out of the byways and nearer the skies let's spread some shade that's refreshing and deep where some tired traveller may lie down and sleep say let's not tarry let's do it right now so much to do if we just find out how we may not be here to help folks so praise one of these days end of poem this recording is in the public domain god by gamaliel bradford read for librivox.org by sarah jump we often think people shallow think them incapable of anything serious or profound because their work is humdrum and their speech trivial such a judgment is unfair since that part of our own life which shows itself to others is superficial likewise though we are conscious that within us is much that it does not reveal i think about god yet i talk of small matters now isn't it odd how my idle tongue chatters of quarrelsome neighbors fine weather and rain indifferent labors indifferent pain some trivial style fashion shifts with a nod and yet all the while i am thinking of god end of poem this recording is in the public domain my triumph by john greenleaf whittier recorded for LibriVox.org by larry wilson the poet looking back upon the hopes he has cherished perceives that he has fallen far short of achieving them the songs he has sung are less sweet than those he has dreamed of singing the wishes he has wrought into facts are less noble than those that are yet unfulfilled but he looks forward to the time when all that he desires for humankind shall yet come to pass the praise will not be his it will belong to others still he does not envy those who are destined to succeed where he failed rather does he rejoice that through them his hopes for the race will be realized and he is happy that by longing for just such a triumph he shares in it and makes it his triumph let the thick curtain fall i better know than all how little i have gained how vast the unattained not by the page word painted let life be banned or sainted deeper than written scroll the colors of our soul sweeter than any sung my songs that found no tongue nobler than any fact my wish that failed to act others shall sing the song others shall write the wrong finish what i begin and all i fail to win what matter i or they mine or another's day so the right word be said and life the sweeter made hail the coming singers hail the brave light bringers forward i reach and share all that they sing and dare the airs of heaven blow o'er me a glory shines before me of what mankind shall be pure generous brave and free a dream of man and woman diviner but still human solving the riddle old shaping the age of gold the love of god and neighbor an equal-handed labor the richer life where beauty walks hand in hand with duty ring bells in unreared steeples the joy of unborn peoples sound trumpets far off blown your triumph is my own parcel and part of all i feel the festival forereached the good to be and share the victory i feel the earth move sunward i join the great march onward and take by faith while living my free hold of thanksgiving. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
to Althea from Prison by Richard Lovelace. Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson. In the great civil war in England between the Puritans and Charles I, the author of this poem sacrificed everything in the royal cause. That cause was defeated, and Lovelace was imprisoned. In these stanzas he makes the most of his gloomy situation, and sings the joys of various kinds of freedom. First is the freedom brought by love, when his sweetheart speaks to him through the grate of the dungeon. Second is the freedom brought by the recollection of good fellowship, when tried and true comrades took their wine straight with no allaying Tim's. Third is the freedom brought by remembrance of the king for whom he was suffering. Finally comes the passionate and heroic assertion that though the body of a man may be confined, nevertheless his spirit can remain free and chainless. When love with unconfined wings hovers within my gates, and my divine Althea brings to whisper at the grates, when I lie tangled in her hair and fettered to her eye, the gods that wanton in the air know no such liberty. When flowing cups run swiftly round with no allaying Thames, our careless heads with roses bound, our hearts with loyal flames, when thirsty grief in wine we steep, when healths and draughts go free, fishes that tipple in the deep know no such liberty. When, like committed linnets, I with shriller throat shall sing the sweetness, mercy, majesty, and glories of my king, when I shall voice aloud how good he is, how great should be, enlarged winds that curl the flood know no such liberty stone walls do not a prison make nor iron bars a cage minds innocent and quiet take that for an hermitage if i have freedom in my love and in my soul am free angels alone that soar above enjoy such liberty and a poem this recording is in the public domain Recording by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Grief by Angela Morgan. Read for LibriVox.org by Dawn Stapleton. Shakespeare says, I can easier teach twenty what were good to be done than be one of the twenty to follow mine own teaching. This is especially true regarding grief or affliction. Man was born unto trouble, as the sparks fly upward. But we bid other people bear their sorrows manfully. We should therefore bear ours with equal courage. Upon this trouble shall I wet my life, as twere a dulling knife. Bade I, my friend, be brave, I shall still braver be. No man shall say of me, others he saved, himself he cannot save, but swift and fair as the primeval word that smote the night. Let there be light. Courage shall leap from me, a gallant sword, to rout the enemy and all his horde, cleaving a kingly pathway through despair. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Dawn Stapleton. The Rectifying Years by St. Clair Adams Read for LibriVox.org by Dawn Stapleton Time brings the deeper understanding That clears up our misconceptions It shows us the error of our hates It dispels our worries and our fears It allays the grief that seemed too poignant to be borne Yes, things are more or less amiss Today it's that, tomorrow this Yet with so much that's out of whack, life does not wholly jump the track. Because since matters move along, no one thing's always staying wrong, 
so heed not failures losses fears but trust the rectifying years what we shall have's not what we've got our pains don't linger in one spot they skip about the seesaw's end that's up will mighty soon descend you've looked at bacon life's like that a streak of lean a streak of fat change like a sky that clouds that clears hangs o'er the rectifying years uneven things not levelled down are somehow simply got around the sting is taken from offence the evil has its recompense the broken heart is knit again the baffled longing knows not pain wrong fades and trouble disappears before the rectifying years then envy hate towards man or class should from your sinful nature pass though others hold a higher place or have more power or wealth or grace the best of them be sure cannot escape the common human lot so many smiles so many tears come with the rectifying years end of poem this recording is in the public domain recording by dawn stapleton To Those Who Fail by Joaquin Miller Read for LibriVox.org by Dawn Stapleton We too often praise the man who wins just because he wins. The plaudits and laurels of victory are the unthinking crowd's means of estimating success. But the vanquished may have fought more nobly than the victor. He may have done his best against hopeless odds. As Addison makes Cato say, tis not in mortals to command success but will do more sympronius will deserve it all honour to him who shall win the prize the world has cried for a thousand years but to him who tries and who fails and dies i give great honour and glory and tears give glory and honour and pitiful tears to all who fail in their deeds sublime their ghosts are many in the van of years they were born with time in advance of time o oh, great is the hero who wins a name but greater many and many a time some pale-faced fellow who dies in shame and lets god finish the thoughts sublime and great is the man with a sword undrawn and good is the man who refrains from wine but the man who fails and yet still fights on Lo, he is twin-born brother of mine. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Dawn Stapleton. Helpin' Out by William Judson Kibbe Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson I always look out for number one was the favourite remark of a man who thought he had found the great rule to success, but he had only stated his own doctrine of selfishness, and his life was never very successful. A man must be big to succeed, and selfishness is always cramping and narrow. There's a lot of folks what preach all day and always pointin' out the way. They say that praying all the time and keeping your heart all full of rhyme will lead your soul to heights above where angels coo like a turtle dove. <laughs> but I's just looking round, that's me. I's trusting lots in what I see. It appears to me there's lots to do before we pass that heavenly blue. I believes in praying, preaching about, but I believe a lot more in helping out. I believes in religion, it's mighty sweet, but the kind that gets in your hands and feet and makes you work when there ain't no praise, nothing but a heart that's all ablaze. If it rains or shines, stays just the same. Say, bless you, honey, sunshine's the name. They don't fuss round about how much pay, but climbs up the trail, helping all the way. The load is often twice their size. And smiling is their biggest prize. They never gets this awful gout, cause they's busy all the time in helping out. 
we had an old mule on master's place and for looks he'd certainly lose the race but there wa'n't a horse for miles around could pull more load and plow more ground when when that donkey brayed his best he seemed to know he'd lick the rest that bray of his was strong as wool it always come at the hardest pull we need more mules with brains on guard that knows the game a pullin hard and a heart that's tender true and stout that believes all day in helpin out we's all this human this common clay this needs a little help to make work play i's read a lot of philosophy day and night and worked around a heap with the law of right i seen the high and mighty come and go i seen the simple spirit come from below and i seen a lot of principle most folks miss i's not a stretchin truth when i say dis keep a smilin and a lovin and a doin all you can for you loses all your trouble when you help your fellow man and you gets on best yourself and of this day ain't no doubt when you practice the art of always helpin out and the poem this recording is in the public domain recording by leonard wilson of springfield ohio Opening Paradise by Thomas Gray, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Opening Paradise We appreciate even the common things of life if we are denied them. See the wretch that long has tossed on the thorny bed of pain, at length repair his vigor lost, and breathe and walk again. The meanest floweret of the vale, the simplest note that swells the gale, the common sun, the air, and skies, to him are opening paradise. Thomas Gray End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To the Men Who Lose by Anonymous Read for LibriVox.org by Melvin Lee When Captain Scott's ill-fated band after reaching the south pole was struggling through the cold and storms back towards safety the strength of evans one of the men became exhausted he had done his best vainly now he did not wish to imperil his companions already sorely tried at a halting place therefore he left them and staggering out into a blizzard perished alone it was a failure yes but was it not also magnificent success here's to the men who lose what though their work be e'er so nobly planned and watched with zealous care no glorious halo crowns their efforts grand contempt is failure's share here's to the men who lose if triumph's easy smile our struggles greet courage is easy then the king is he who after fierce defeat can up and fight again here's to the men who lose the ready plaudits of a fawning world ring sweet in victor's ears the vanquished's banners never are unfurled for them there sound no cheers here's to the men who lose the touchstone of true worth is not success there is a higher test though fate may darkly frown onward to press and bravely do one's best here's to the men who lose it is the vanquished's praise that i sing and this is the toast i choose a hard-fought failure is a noble thing here's to the men who lose end of poem this recording is in the public domain it may be by S. E. Kizer, read for LibriVox.org by Melvin Lee. Many, many are the human struggles in which we can lend no aid, but if we cannot help, at least we need not hinder. 
it may be that you cannot stay to lend a friendly hand to him who stumbles on the slippery way pressed by conditions hard and grim it may be that you dare not heed his call for help because you lack the strength to lift him but you need not push him back it may be that he has not won the right to hope for your regard he may in folly have begun the course that he has found so hard it may be that your fingers bleed that fortune turns a bitter frown upon your efforts but you need not kick him down end of poem this recording is in the public domain life by edward roland sill read for librivox dot org by melvin lee in life is necessarily much monotony sameness but our triumph may lie in putting richness and meaning into routine that apparently lacks them forenoon and afternoon and night forenoon and afternoon and night forenoon and what the empty song repeats itself no more yea that is life make this forenoon sublime this afternoon a psalm this night a prayer and time is conquered and thy crown is won end of poem this recording is in the public domain the grumpy guy by griffith alexander read for librivox dot org by melvin lee when students came full of ambition to the great scientist agassiz he gave each a fish and told him to find out what he could about it they went to work and in a day or two were ready for their report but agassiz did not come round to kill time they went to work again observed dissected conjectured and when at the end of a fortnight agassiz finally appeared they felt that their knowledge was really exhaustive the master's brief comment was that they had made a fair beginning and again he left they then fell to in earnest and after weeks and months of investigation declared that a fish was the most fascinating of studies if our interest in life fails it is not from material to work on no two leaves are alike not two human beings are alike and if we are discerning the attraction of any one of them is infinite the grumpy guy was feeling blue the grumpy guy was glum the grumpy guy with baleful eye took misery from a chum he hailed misfortune as his pals and murmured let em come oh what's the bloomin use he yelped his face an angry red when everything's been thought before and everything's been said and what's a grumpy guy to do except to go to bed and where's the joy the poets sing the merriment and fun how can one start a thing that's new when everything's begun when everything's been planned before and everything's been done when everything's been dreamed before and everything's been sought when everything that ever ran has so to speak been caught when every game's been played before and every battle fought i started him at solitaire a fooling piffling game he played it ninety-seven hours and failed to find it tame in all the times he dealt the cards no two games were the same he never tumbled to its tricks nor mastered all its curves he grunted well this takes the cake the pickles and preserves its infinite variety is getting on my nerves its infinite variety i scoffed just fifty-two poor trifling bits of pasteboard their combinations few compared to what there is in man the poorest even you variety you'll never find in forty-seven decks one-tenth of the variety found in the gentler sex card combinations are but frills to hang around their necks the sun won't rise tomorrow as it came to us today twill be older we'll be older and to time this debt we pay for nothing can repeat itself 
for nothing knows the way. Then the grumpy guy was silent as a miser hoarding pelf. He knew it was time to put his grouch away upon the shelf. And so he did. You see, I was just talking to myself. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Fighter by S. E. Kizer. Read for LibriVox.org by Melvin Lee. If life were all easy, we should degenerate into weaklings, into human mush. It is the fighting spirit that makes us strong, nor do any of us lack for a chance to exercise this spirit. Struggle is everywhere. As Kearney said at Fair Oaks, there is lovely fighting along the whole line. I fight a battle every day against discouragement and fear. Some foe stands always in my way. The path ahead is never clear. I must forever be on guard against the doubts that skulk along. I get ahead by fighting hard, but fighting keeps my spirit strong. I hear the croakings of despair, the dark predictions of the weak. I find myself pursued by care, no matter what the end I seek. My victories are small and few. It matters not how hard I strive. Each day the fight begins anew, but fighting keeps my hopes alive. My dreams are spoiled by circumstance. My plans are wrecked by fate or luck. Some hour, perhaps, will bring my chance, but that great hour has never struck. My progress has been slow and hard. I've had to climb and crawl and swim, fighting for every stubborn yard, but I have kept in fighting trim. I have to fight my doubts away and be on guard against my fears. The feeble croaking of dismay has been familiar through the years. My dearest plans keep going wrong. Events combine to thwart my will, but fighting keeps my spirit strong, and I am undefeated still. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Youth After Pain by Margaret Whittemer. Read for LibriVox.org by Jolie Pastor. Since pain is the lot of all, we cannot hope to escape it. Since only through pain can we come into true and helpful sympathy with men, we should not wish to escape it. What if this year has given grief that some year must bring? What if it hurt your joyous youth, crippled your laughter's wing? You always knew it was coming, coming to all, to you. They always said there was suffering. Now it is done. Come through. Even if you have blundered, even if you have sinned, still is the steadfast arch of the sky and the healing veil of the wind. And after only a little, a little of hurt and pain, you shall have the web of your own old dreams wrapping your heart again. Only your heart can pity, now where it laughed and passed, now you can bend to comfort men, one with them all at last. You shall have back your laughter, you shall have back your song, only the world is your brother now, only your soul is strong. Margaret Whittemer from the old road to paradise end of poem this recording is in the public domain canned by edgar a guest read for librivox.org by sk canned a great achieving soul will not clog itself with a cowardly thought or a cowardly watchword Cardinal Richelieu, in Bulwer-Lytton's play, declares, In the lexicon of youth, which fate reserves for a bright manhood, there is no such word as fail. Impossible, Napoleon is quoted as saying, is a word found only in the Dictionary of Fools. Can't is the worst word that's written or spoken, doing more harm here than slander and lies. On it is many a strong spirit broken, and with it, many a good purpose dies. It springs from the lips of the thoughtless each morning, and drops us of courage we need through the day. 
it rings in our ears like a timely sent warning and laughs when we falter and fall by the way kant is the father of feeble endeavor the parent of terror and half-hearted work it weakens the efforts of artisans clever and makes of the toiler an indolent shirk it poisons the soul of the man with a vision it stifles in infancy many a plan it greets honest toiling with open derision and mocks at the hopes and the dreams of a man cant is a word none should speak without blushing to utter it should be a symbol of shame ambition and courage it daily is crushing it blights a man's purpose and shortens his aim despise it with all your hatred of error refuse it the lodgment it seeks in your brain arm against it as a creature of terror and all that you dream of you some day shall gain cant is a word that is foe to ambition an enemy ambushed to shatter your will its prey is forever the man with a mission and bows but to courage and patience and skill hate it with hatred that's deep and undying for once it is welcomed it will break any man whatever the goal you are seeking keep trying and answer this demon by saying i can end of poem this recording is in the public domain the struggle by miriam teichner read for librivox.org by sarah jump we all dream of being St. George's, and fighting dragons amid glamour and glory and the applause of the world, but our real fights are mostly commonplace, routine battles where no great victory is ours at the end of the day. To persist in them requires quiet strength and unfaltering courage. Did you ever want to take your two bare hands and choke out of the world your big success? Beat, torn fist bleeding, pathways rugged, grand, by sheer brute strength and bigness nothing less so at the last triumphant battered strong you might gaze down on what you choked and beat and say ah world you've wrought to do me wrong and thus have i accepted my defeat have you ever dreamed of virile deeds and vast and then come back from dreams with wobbly knees to find your way the braver vision passed by picking meekly at typewriter keys by bending o'er a ledger day by day, by some machine-like drudging, no great woe to grapple with, slow, painful is the way, and still the bravest fight and conquer so. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Hold Fast by Everard Jack Appleton From the Quiet Courage Read for LibriVox.org A football coach who told his players that their rivals were too strong for them would be seeking a new position the next year. If the opposing team is formidable, he says so. If his men have their work cut out for them, he admits it. But he mentions these things as incitements to effort. Merely saying a victory that it can be won is among the surest ways of winning it. When you're nearly drowned in trouble, and the world is dark as ink, when you feel yourself a-sinking neath the strain, and you think, I've got to holler help, just take another breath and pretend you've lost your voice and can't complain. That's the idea. Pretend you've lost your voice and can't complain. When the future glowers at you like a threatening thundercloud, just grit your teeth and bend your head and say, It's dark and disagreeable, and I can't help feeling blue, but there's coming sure as fate a brighter day. Say it slowly, but there's coming sure as fate a brighter day. You have bluffed your way through ticklish situations, that I know. You are looking back on troubles past and gone. Now turn the tables, and as you have fought and won before, just bluff yourself to keep on holding on. Try it once. Just bluff yourself to keep on holding on. Don't worry if the roseate hues of life are faded out. 
bend low before the storm and wait a while the pendulum is bound to swing again and you will find that you have not forgotten how to smile that's the truth that you have not forgotten how to smile end of poem this recording is in the public domain will by ella wheeler wilcox read for LibriVox.org by kathleen warren hastings resolved in his boyhood that he would be the owner of the estate known as dalesford this was the one great purpose that unified his varied and far-reaching activities admire him or not we must at least praise his luck in holding to his purpose a purpose he ultimately attained you will be what you will to be let failure find its false content in that poor word environment but spirit scorns it and is free it masters time it conquers space it cows that boastful trickster chance and bids the tyrant circumstance uncrown and fill a servant's place the human will that force unseen the offspring of a deathless soul can hew the way to any goal though walls of granite intervene be not impatient in delay but wait as one who understands when spirit rises and commands the gods are ready to obey the river seeking for the sea confronts the dam and precipice yet knows it cannot fail or miss you will be what you will to be end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Game by Grantland Rice, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Lessing said that if God should come to him with truth in one hand and the never-ending pursuit of truth in the other, and should offer him his choice, he would humbly and reverently take the pursuit of truth. Perhaps it is best that finite beings should not attain infinite success but however remote that for which they seek or strive they may by their diligence and generosity make the very effort to secure it noble in doing this they earn as pope tells us a truer commendation than success itself could bring them act well thy part there all the honor lies let's play it out this little game called life where we are listed for so brief a spell not just to win amid the tumult rife or where acclaim and gay applauses swell nor just to conquer where some one must lose or reach the goal whatever be the cost for there are other better ways to choose though in the end the battle may be lost let's play it out as if it were a sport wherein the game is better than the goal and never mind the detailed scores report of errors made if each with dauntless soul but stick it out until the day is done not wasting fairness for success or fame so when the battle has been lost or won the world at least can say he played the game let's play it out this little game called work or war or love or what part each may draw play like a man who scorns to quit or shirk because the break may carry some deep flaw nor simply holding that the goal is all that keeps the player in the contest staying but stick it out from curtain rise to fall as if the game itself were worth the playing grantland rice end of poem this recording is in the public domain courage by florence earl coates read for LibriVox.org by melvin lee the philosopher kant held himself to his habits so precisely that people set their watches by him as he took his daily walk we may be equally constant amid worldly vicissitudes but only a man of true courage is tis the front towards life that matters most the tone the point of view the constancy that in defeat remains untouched and true for death in patriot fight may be less gallant than a smile and high endeavor to the gods seems in itself worth while 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Good Name by William Shakespeare. Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson. We should respect the good name of other people, and should safeguard our own by a high sense of honor. At the close of the Civil War, a representative of an insurance company offered Robert E. Lee the presidency of the firm at a salary of $50,000 a year. Lee replied that while he wished to earn his living, he doubted whether his services would be worth so large a sum. We don't want your services, the man interrupted. We want your name. That, said Lee quietly, is not for sale. He accepted instead the presidency of a college at fifteen hundred dollars a year. Good name in man and woman, dear my lord, is the immediate jewel of their souls. Who steals my purse, steals trash. Tis something, nothing. Twas mine, tis his, and has been slave to thousands. But he that filches from me my good name, robs me of that which not enriches him, and makes me poor indeed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Swellitis by Joseph Morris. Read for LibriVox.org by Jolie Pastor. A certain employer of large numbers of men makes it a principle to praise none of them not because they are undeserving and not because he dislikes to commend but because experience has taught him that usually the praise goes to the head of the recipient both impairing his work and making it harder for others to associate with him a good test of a man is his way of taking commendation he may even while grateful be stirred to humility that he has not done better still and may resolve to accomplish more or imitating the frog who wished to look like an ox he may swell and swell until figuratively speaking he bursts somebody said he'd done it well and presto his head began to swell bigger and bigger the poor thing grew a wonder it didn't split in two in size a balloon could scarcely match it he needed a fishing pole to scratch it but six and a half was the size of his hat and it rattled around on his head at that good work somebody chanced to say and his chest swelled big as a load of hay about himself like a rooster he crowed of his wonderful work he bragged and blowed he marched around like a peacock strut gigantic to him was the figure he cut but he wore a very small size suit and loosely it hung on him to boot he was the chap who made things hum he was the drumstick and the drum he was the sharp bosom and the starch he was the keystone in the arch he was the access of the earth nothing existed before his birth but when he was off from work a eh, nobody knew that he was away this is a fact that is sad to tell it's the empty head that is bound to swell it's the lightweight fellow who soars to the skies and bursts like a bubble before your eyes. A big man is humbled by honest praise and tries to think of all the ways to improve his work and do it well. But a little man starts of himself to yell. Joseph Morris End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Cares by Elizabeth Barrett Browning, read for LibriVox.org by Kathleen. To those who are wearied, fretted, and worried, there is no physician like nature. When our nerves are frazzled and our sleep is on refreshing, we can find no better antidote to the clamorous grind and frenzy of the city than the stillness and solitude of hills, streams, and tranquil stars. 
that man lays up for himself resources of strength who now and then exchanges the ledger for green leaves the factory for wild flowers business for brook croon and bird song the little cares that fretted me i lost them yesterday among the fields above the sea among the winds at play among the lowing of the herds the rustling of the trees among the singing of the birds the humming of the bees the foolish fears of what may happen i cast them all away among the clover scented grass among the new mown hay among the husking of the corn where drowsy poppies nod where ill thoughts die and good are born out in the fields with god End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Faith by Edward Roland Sill Read for LibriVox.org by Melvin Lee Anyone who has ridden across the continent on a train must marvel at the faith and imagination of the engineers who constructed the road. The topographical advantages seized the grades made easy of ascent, the curves and straight stretches planned, the tunnels so carefully calculated that workmen, beginning on opposite sides of a mountain, met in the middle, and all this visualized and thought out before the actual work was begun. Faith has such foresight, such courage, whether it toils actively or can merely bide its time. The treetop high above the barren field, rising beyond the night's gray folds of mist, rest stirless where the upper air is sealed, to perfect silence by the faint moon kissed. But the low branches, drooping to the ground, sway to and fro, as sways funeral plume, while from their restless depths low whispers sound, we fear, we fear the darkness and the gloom. Dim forms beneath us pass and reappear, and mournful tongues are menacing us here. Then from the topmost bough falls calm reply. Hush, hush, I see the coming of the morn. Swiftly the silent night is passing by, and in her bosom rosy dawn is born. "'Tis but your own dim shadows that ye see, "'tis but your own low moans that trouble ye. "'So life stands, with a twilight world around, "'faith turned serenely to the steadfast sky, "'still answering the heart that sweeps the ground, "'sobbing in fear and tossing restlessly. "'Hush, hush, the dawn breaks o'er the eastern sea, Tis but thine own dim shadow troubling thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Playing the Game by Anonymous. Read for LibriVox.org by S.K. Playing the Game. We all like the good sport, the man who plays fair and courteously and with every ounce of his energy, even when the game is going against him. Life is a game with a glorious prize, if you can only play it right. It is give and take, build and break, and often it ends in a fight. But he surely wins who honestly tries, regardless of wealth or fame. He can never despair who plays it fair. How are you playing the game? Do you wilt and whine if you fail to win in the manner you think your due? Do you sneer at the man in case that he can and does do better than you? Do you take your rebuffs with a knowing grin? Do you laugh though you pull up lame? Does your faith hold true when the whole world's blue? How are you playing the game? Get into the thick of it, wade in, boys, whatever your cherished goal. Brace up your will till your pulses thrill and you dare to your very soul. Do something more than make a noise. Let your purpose leap into flame. As you plunge with a cry, I shall do or die, then you will be playing the game. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. What Dark Days Do by Everard Jack Appleton 
Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson. A real man does not want all his barriers leveled. He, of course, welcomes easy tasks, but he welcomes hard ones also. The difficult or unpleasant thing puts him on his mettle, throws him on his own resources. It gives him something of the stern joy which warriors feel in foemen worthy of their steel. Moreover, as a foil or contrast, it enables him to value more truly the good things he constantly enjoys, perhaps without perceiving them. I sorter like a gloomy day, the kind that just won't smile. It makes a fellow hump hisself to make life seem worth while. When sun's a shinin and the sky is washed out bright and gay, it ain't no job to whistle but it is when skies are gray so gloomy days are good for us they make us look about to find our blessings make us count the friends who never doubt most anyone can smile and joke and hold blue devils back when it is bright but we must work to grin when skies are black that's why i sort of like dark days that put it up to me to keep the gloom from soaking in my whole anatomy. And if they never come along, my soul would surely rust. The dark days keeps my cheerfulness from dragging in the dust. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Gladness by Anna Hempstead Branch Read for LibriVox.org by Melvin Lee A coal miner does not need the sun's illumination. He carries his own light. The world has brought not anything to make me glad today. The swallow had a broken wing, and after all my journeying, there was no water in the spring. My friend has said me nay, but yet somehow I needs must sing as on a luckier day. Dusk falls as gray as any tear. There is no hope in sight, but something in me seems so fair that, like a star, I needs must wear a safety made of shining air between me and the night. Such inner weavings do I wear, all fashioned of delight. I need not for these robes of mine the loveliness of earth, but happenings remote and fine, like threads of dreams, will blow and shine in gossamer and crystalline, and I was glad from birth. So even while my eyes repine, my heart is clothed in mirth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. It won't stay blowed by St. Clair Adams Read for LibriVox.org by Sarah Jump It is easier to fail than succeed. It is easier to drift downstream than up. But just as pent steam finds an escape somewhere, so will the man who persists break at one point or another through confining circumstance. To the sniffin' pickin'ninny once his good old mammy said, Your little black nose am drippin' from de cold dat's in your head, and your sleeve am slick and shiny like de hillside when it snows. Why don't you pump de bellers from de inside of your nose? Ain't I been? the child replied to her. A doin' of just dat. Twill I's got a turble empty feel right where I wears my hat. De traffic sort of naturally keeps gettin' in de road. I blow my nose a plenty, but it won't stay blowed. What's de use of raising chickens if they won't stay riz? What's de use of freezing sherbet if it won't stay frizz? What's de use of paying debts off if they's going to stay owed? What's de use of blowing noses if they won't stay blowed? This old world is sometimes jealous of the chap who means to rise. It sneers at what he's doing, or it bats him twixt the eyes. It trips him when he's careless, and it makes his way so hard. What's left of him is sinew, not a walking tub of lard. But it's only wasting effort, for by George the guy keeps on. When his hopes have crumbled round him, and you'd think his faith was gone. 
till the world at last knocks under and it passes him a crown once twice thrice it has upset him but he won't stay down what cares he when out he's flattened by the cruel blow it deals he has rubber in his shoulders and a mainspring in his heels let the world uncork its buffets till he's bruised from toe to crown let it thump him bump him dump him but he won't stay down end of poem this recording is in the public domain the rainbow by william wordsworth read for librivox.org by sk the rainbow our lives are not a hodgepodge of separate experiences though they sometimes seem so they are held together by simple things which we behold again and again with the same emotions thus the man is what the boy has been the tree is inclined in the precise direction the twig was bent my heart leaps up when i behold a rainbow in the sky so was it when my life began so is it now i am a man so be it when i shall grow old or let me die the child is father of the man and i could wish my days to be bound each to each by natural piety end of poem this recording is in the public domain the firm of grin and barrett by sam walter foss read for librivox.org by donald gilmore it has been said that when disaster overtakes us we can do one of two things we can grin and bear it or we needn't grin the spirit that keeps a smile on our face when our burdens is heaviest is the spirit that will win in the long run many men know how to take success quietly the real test of a man is the way he takes failure no financial throw volcanic ever yet was known to scare it never yet was any panic scared the firm of grin and barrett from the flurry and the fluster from the ruin and the crashes they arise in brighter lustre like the phoenix from his ashes when the banks and corporations quake with fear they do not share it smiling through all perturbations goes the firm of grin and barrett grin and barrett who can scare it scare the firm of grin and barrett when the tide sweep of reverses smites them firm they stand and dare it without wailings tears or curses this stout firm of grin and bear it even should their house go under in the flood and inundation calm they stand amid the thunder without noise or demonstration and when sackcloth is the fashion with a patient smile they wear it without petulance or passion this old firm of grin and bear it grin and bear it who can scare it scare the firm of grin and bear it when the other firms show dizziness here's a house that does not share it wouldn't you like to join the business join the firm of grin and bear it give your strength that does not murmur and your nerve that does not falter and you've joined a house that's firmer than the old rock of gibraltar they have won a good prosperity why not join the firm and share it step young fellow with celerity join the firm of grin and bear it grin and bear it who can scare it scare the firm of grin and bear it End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Challenge by Jean Nett. Read for LibriVox.org by S.K. Challenge Napoleon is reported to have complained of the English that they didn't have sense enough to know when they were beaten. Even if defeat is unmistakable, it need not be final. A battle may be lost, but the campaign won. A campaign lost, but the war won. Life, I challenge you to try me. Do me to unending pain. Stay my hand, becloud my vision. Break my heart, and then again. Shatter every dream I've cherished. Fill my heart with ruthless fear. Follow every smile that cheers me with a bitter, blinding tear. Thus, I dare you, you can try me. Seek to make me cringe and moan. Still my unbound soul defies you. I'll withstand you and alone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Your Mission by Ellen M. H. Gates 
Read for LibriVox.org by S.K. Your Mission One of the most often heard of sentences is, quote, I don't know what I am to do in the world, end quote. Yet very few people are ever for a moment out of something to do, especially if they do not insist in climbing to the top of the pole and waving the flag, but are willing to steady the pole while somebody else climbs. If you cannot, on the ocean, sail among the swiftest fleet, rocking on the highest billows, laughing at the storms you meet, you can stand among the sailors, anchored yet within the bay, you can lend a hand to help them as they launch their boats away. If you are too weak to journey up the mountain steep and high, you can stand within the valley while the multitudes go by, you can chant in happy measure as they slowly pass along, Though they may forget the singer, they will not forget the song. If you cannot, in the harvest, garner up the richest sheaves, many a grain, both ripe and golden, oft the careless reaper leaves, go and glean among the briars, growing rank against the wall, for it may be that their shadow hides the heaviest grain of all. If you cannot, in the conflict, prove yourself a soldier true, if, where fire and smoke are thickest, there's no work for you to do. When the battlefield is silent, you can go with careful tread, you can bear away the wounded, you can cover up the dead. Do not then stand idly waiting for some greater work to do. Fortune is a lazy goddess, she will never come to you. Go and toil in any vineyard, do not fear to do and dare. If you want a field of labor, you can find it anywhere. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Victory by Miriam Teichner Read for LibriVox.org by S.K. Victory To fail is not a disgrace. The disgrace lies in not trying. In his old age, Sir Walter Scott found that a publishing firm he was connected with was heavily in debt. He refused to take advantage of the bankruptcy law and sat down with his pen to make good the deficit. Though he wore out his life in the struggle and did not live to see the debt entirely liquidated, he died an honoured and honourable man. I call no fight a losing fight. If fighting I have gained some straight new strength, if fighting I turned ever toward the light, all unallied with forces of the night, if beaten, quivering, I could say at length, I did no deeds that needs to be unnamed. I fought and lost, and I am unashamed. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Times Go by Turns by Robert Southwell Read for LibriVox.org by Nadu one of the greatest blessings in life is alteration. The ins become outs, the outs ins, the ups become downs, the downs ups, and so on. And it is better so. We must not get too highly elated at success, for life is not all success. We must not grow too downcast from failure, for life is not all failure. The lopped tree in time may grow again, most naked plants renew both fruit and flower. The sorriest white may find release of pain. The driest soil suck in some moistening shower. Time goes by turns and chances change by course. From foul to fair, from better hap to worse. The sea of fortune doth not ever flow. She draws her favors to the lowest ebb. Her tides have equal times to come and go. Her loom doth weave the fine and coarsest web. No joy so great but runneth to an end. No hap so hard but may in fine amend. Not always fall of leaf, nor ever spring. Not endless night, yet not eternal day. The saddest birds a season find to sing. The roughest storm a calm may soon allay. Thus with succeeding turns, God tempereth all, 
that man may hope to rise, yet fear to fall. A chance may win that by mischance was lost, that net that holds no great takes little fish. In some things all, in all things none are crossed. Few all they need, but none have all they wish. Unmingled joys here to no man befall, who least hath some, who most hath never all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Today by Thomas Carlyle. Read for LibriVox.org by Philip Gould. The past did not behold today. The future shall not. We must use it now if it is to be of any benefit to mankind. So here hath been dawning another blue day. Think, wilt thou let it slip useless away? Out of eternity this new day is born. Into eternity at night will return. Behold it aforetime, no eye ever did, So soon it forever from all eyes is hid. Here hath been dawning another blue day. Think, wilt thou let it slip useless away? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Unafraid by Everard Jack Appleton Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama I have no fear. What is in store for me shall find me ready for it, undismayed. God grant only my cowardice may be afraid, to be afraid. Everard Jack Appleton End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Borrowed Feathers by Joseph Morris Read for LibriVox.org by Melvin Lee Many good, attractive people spoil the merits they have by trying to be something bigger or showier. It is always best to be oneself. A rooster one morning was preening his feathers that glistened so bright in the sun. He admired the tints of the various colors as he laid them in place one by one now as roosters go he was a fine bird and he should have been satisfied but suddenly there as he marched along some peacock feathers he spied they had beautiful spots and their colors were gay he wished that his own could be green he dropped his tail tried to hide it away was completely ashamed to be seen then his foolish mind hatched up a scheme a peacock yet he could be so he hopped behind a bush to undress, where the other fowls could not see. He caught his own tail between his bill and pulled every feather out, and into the hole stuck the peacock plumes, then proudly strutted about. The other fowls rushed to see the queer sight, and the peacocks came when they heard. They could not agree just what he was, but pronounced him a funny bird. Then the chickens were angry that one of their kind should try to be a peacock, and the peacocks were mad that one with their tail should belong to a common fowl flock. So the chickens beset him most cruelly behind, and yanked his whole tail out together. The peacocks attacked him madly before, and pulled out each chicken feather, and when he stood stripped clean down to the skin, a horrible thing to the rest, he learned this sad lesson when it was too late. As his own simple self, he was best. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.